Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Larry Huggins here in Barcelona, Spain. Welcome to The Good Life. We've got a great program for you today to help you live that good life. We are continuing with our episode on the, uh, the Gospel of Paul, and I'm laughing at myself because once again, I have forgotten to change the episode. We're now on 28. Man, we have really moved forward here, and I'm going to reposition that a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for everyone who's watching and listening and participating. And I just pray that, that we have open eyes, open here and open hearts so that we can see, hear and understand and do your word and, and live the good life. Everything that you have given us, we come behind a no good gift. We're thoroughly furnished into every good work. You'll in no wise withhold any good thing from them who walk uprightly. Well, we're in Christ, so that makes us upright. Praise God. Yes, uh, this is episode 28 for the Gospel of Paul. And if you haven't gotten a chance to see some of the previous episodes, I suggest very strongly that you go on to our YouTube channel, zchurch.life, Zchurch Life YouTube channel, and pick it up at, at uh, episode number one. They're short, they're about 15 minutes, and run through them and you'll get a real in-depth look at the Gospel of Paul, and you'll understand why he called it his Gospel. And uh, there were five Gospels, if you include Paul's Gospel, but his was not the fifth, it was the first. He wrote his Gospel before Mark wrote his, many, many years before Mark wrote his, and Mark was the first Gospel, a synoptic Gospel, but Paul's was first. And then it was uh, Luke wrote the second one, Matthew wrote the third one, John wrote the fourth one, but Paul's letters were the first official church documents that were circulated to all the churches, and that happened decades before the other letters started to be circulated. So we have to uh, give credit where credit due. God chose Paul to release the, uh, the message of grace into the world, and great things are in the Gospel of Paul, amazing things. You know, he wrote the bulk of the New Testament. I'm not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts, but actually uh, from about the um, 13th chapter on, the book of Acts is, is the Acts of Paul. And of course, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, traveled with Paul and chronicled Paul's missionary journeys and everything that happened to him, had a first hand eyewitness account. And then after Paul was, was killed by Nero, the Roman emperor, Luke wrote his gospel shortly after Mark wrote his, and he wrote the book of Acts after he wrote the gospel of Luke. But apparently he had a good memory and he took very careful notes and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit to write both of those books, very valuable books. So as I said, the book of Acts from midway on is really the Acts of Paul, and what a story it is. I'm fascinated by the life of Paul, and I hope you're interested. Obviously, you are, because if you're listening and watching to this, you have some interest in it, and um, you should, because it, it is the premier, I'll say it that way, it's the, it's the premier, it's the foremost gospel of the New Testament. Paul was specially chosen by Paul, a chosen vessel. He was given re revelation directly from, from Jesus to him. He didn't learn his, his gospel from men. He wasn't taught it by men, but by direct revelation. He was caught up into the third heaven. And so today we're going to talk about some of the things that wouldn't be in your Bible if it weren't for Paul. Um, he's the one who gave us the idea of the new creation. I say idea, it's a reality. It's a spiritual reality, what we call new creation realities. And everything I'm getting ready to talk to you about is a new creation reality. It's something real that we have by virtue of our union with Christ. We're in union with Christ. We were born again, right? And so 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that is purely Pauline theology. Nobody else used those terms. Paul did on more than one occasion. 
If any man be in Christ, this is Pauline teaching to be in Christ, to be blessed through our relationship with Christ. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm, I'm an in him teacher or an in Christ teacher. And I look for these prepositional phrases uh, in Christ, in Jesus, through whom, by whom, in the Lord, in the beloved. There's different ways to say it, but uh, I've collected hundreds of in him, in him scriptures, and most of them are in the writings of Paul. In fact, 95%. I don't know. I haven't done the math, but it's a lot. Praise God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation, uh, has a new identity, the, the born-again Jews, the early born-again Jews, didn't have that revelation until Paul taught them. They saw themselves primarily as Jews and secondarily as Jews who had received the Messiah, and they were expecting the Messiah to come back and set up his earthly kingdom on the earth in Jerusalem, be crowned, uh, overthrow the Romans, do all that. That was their hopes. And, and Paul changed their perspective perception. Uh, about 10 years after the resurrection of Jesus, Barnabas got Paul, brought him to Antioch, and there were uh, believing Jews and believing Gentiles who were in Antioch, and Paul taught all of them. And after teaching them for one year, they began to understand who they were or who they are in Christ, and they began to call themselves Christians. They weren't called Christians until Paul taught them that they are in Christ, in Christians is what I say. Pauline revelation, where would you be without that revelation of Christ, uh, of being a new creature in Christ? Uh, Christ in you, that's Pauline doctrine. Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1, 2. Uh, you won't get that anywhere except for the teachings of Paul. Now, uh, it may be said in other ways, but the, this particular verbiage right here, it's Pauline. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You can't say it any better than that. He taught us that we're raised up and seated in the heavenly places. Uh, up until that time, uh, let's say the uh, Jewish believers, uh, they saw themselves as down here on earth and they were trying to bring Jesus down on the earth to set up his kingdom, uh, an earthly kingdom. And Paul was saying, no, we're caught up into heaven and we're ruling and reigning in life by one Christ Jesus. Pauline revelation, he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you want anybody to take any one of these scriptures out of your Bible? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Colossians 1, 2, Ephesians 2, 6. No, no, no. You want to leave that in your Bible because they're so important to be a new creature, to know that Christ is in you, the hope of glory, to know that you're seated in the heavenlies in Jesus. You can thank God for the Apostle Paul because that revelation came from Jesus through Paul to you. Uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know as much as we know about the ministry of the Holy Spirit if it weren't for Paul. Amen. Paul said that uh, we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit himself prays through us with groanings which cannot be uttered in other tongues. And he that searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit and prays according to the will of God. And then we know that everything is going to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That is Pauline theology. He taught us about the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit, how he works through us to pray with us and for us to bring us revelation so that we will know that all things work together for good. In other words, we'll have a, we'll have a spirit of faith. In other words, we'll have uh, the gift of faith operating in our lives. We'll have, a, uh, we'll have a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, which brings us to another thing. That, by the way, was Romans 8, 26 through 28. Uh, he taught us about, about uh, spiritual gifts. Um, the manifestation of the gift, let me rearrange my screen here a little bit. The manifestation of the Spirit, I should say, is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of knowledge, um, the word of wisdom by the same Spirit, another faith by the same Spirit, another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. These gifts of the Spirit, and I, I just read nine of them, and many of those are plural, 
that, that was introduced to us by the Apostle Paul. You won't get that anywhere else. You won't get that information about spiritual gifts. And then he also taught us about the administration and operation of spiritual gifts, how they work in the church. But uh, even more importantly, he taught us about ministry gifts. No one else gives us this teaching but Paul. God has set in the church, first of all, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healing, helps government, diversities of tongues. That's the apostle Paul. God set in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's the apostle Paul. We learned about the specialization and the organization, the order of spiritual gifts, men and women who are ordained by God to edify and build up the local church supernaturally, apostles, prophets, and so forth. That came to us through Paul. Now, would you want someone to take uh, the gifts of the Spirit away from you and the teaching, the understanding that you have? No, of course not. Would you want them to take away from you the understanding you have of the, the apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers? No, 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 no. Well, you can thank God for the ministry of his chosen vessel, the apostle Paul, because He's the one God used to release this revelation of the organization of the local church and, and not only apostles and prophets, but elders and deacons. Uh, that's Pauline's theology and uh, the etiquette and protocol of the local church. Uh, you know how that uh, the apostle, the prophets can prophesy by two or three and let another interpret. Uh, those beautiful lessons on etiquette and protocol were given to us by the by the Apostle Paul. I've, I've studied it in depth, and every time I study it, I, I learn something new. It is rich, and I thank God for the teaching of uh, the Apostle Paul. You get good things from James and John and, and Peter and Jude, but uh, the richest information that we get that concerns directly our, our relationship with Jesus came from the Apostle Paul. He's the one that taught us we're raised up and seated together. He's the one who taught us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. He's the one who taught us that we're new creatures. And he's the one, and nobody wants to let go of this, is he's the one who taught us about the catching away. Praise God. That uh, we're going to be caught up together and meet Jesus in the clouds. Beautiful. Uh, now, I, I know most Christians would fight to hold on to that, well, never criticize Paul because that teaching about the catching away came through Paul. And there's so much other that he taught us. He taught us about tongues and interpretation of tongues um, as a ministry tool. It's powerful. And, and I do that. Uh, I, I learned a lot about that from Oral Roberts. That's how he built his ministry by praying in tongues and praying with the understanding. I'll, I'll teach on it one day. I have taught on it many times, but I'll teach on it one day in the good life so you can get a hold of it and start doing it. Um, I don't know how long we're going to stay with the, uh, the, uh, this Gospel of Paul, but a little while longer. I'm, I'm not ready to quit just yet. Uh, he taught us about mission support. <laughs> And uh, I've got a lot of my missionary uh, scriptures out of the writings of Paul and, and how he raised money and how he uh, encouraged people to support missions and taught them basically that it was their duty. And uh, the, my mentor, Dr. Lester Summerall, certainly believed it. And uh, he believed people should support missionaries, and I do too. Remember, I'm a missionary to Europe and the world. I live here in Spain, but I'm actually a prophet called to the nations, plural, uh, I've lived in uh, South America, I've lived in Mexico, I've lived in England, and I've lived in now in Spain. I've been to every state in the United States, I've been to every state in Mexico with the exception of Chiapas. I've been in all five Central American countries. I've been in 70, I've forgotten, I think 72, actually a few more than that. I was thinking the other day that I went to the uh, San Blas Islands, which is sovereign. It's part of Panama, but it's semi-autonomous, and uh, it's a nation. I had to have special permission uh, from the leaders of the San Blas uh, Indian nation to be there. And, of course, I've been to the Vatican, and that's, uh, that's another nation. So you could add those together, and maybe it's 74, 75 countries. Some of those countries I've been to many, many times. And uh, it, it's the Apostle Paul who ignited in me a desire to reach nations for Christ. Oh, 
he's the one who taught and fought for the rights for Gentiles to be saved. There were actually Jewish believers who resisted that and some fought against it and they continued to fight Paul right up into the end. And there's some today who, who really emphasize the importance of being, uh, first of all, Jewish, and secondly, Christians. But Paul said in Christ Jesus, circumcision doesn't profit anything or uncircumcision, but a new creature. There you have it. That's Pauline theology. And uh, that's all of our time for today. I want to invite you to be with us at Z Church every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. You can be with us on the Z Church platform. Just go to zchurch.life. You're one click away. You can see and be seen, get a word of knowledge of prophecy. It's exciting. Or you can participate on Facebook Live or YouTube Live or Twitch Live at the same time, 10 o'clock a.m. Saturdays. We have church on Saturdays, so you can be there. We don't have a religious reason for doing it. It was practical, and that's the way the Lord led us. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, we worship God every day. Every day is a good day to have church because we are the church. And where two or three are gathered, the Lord is there. And we happen to gather online, which is a good thing because Paul said, though we're absent in the flesh, we're together in the spirit. That's powerful. We're raised up together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. So uh, having church online is real church. It's powerful. Z Church is a real church. And we want you to receive the benefit of it. So uh, uh, give us a visit. Check us out. And if you want to leave an offering, and I recommend it, uh, when you're on zchurch.life, just pull down the giving tab. And I'll tell you what, I'll put this in the comment section as soon as I conclude things. And I just have one last thing to say to you, and that is keep it simple, sweetheart. Because sometimes the most beautiful thing can be so simple.